back here with the second turn of Greenland. Here we are, we're going to turn over the next event card. I think we had the only positive event one, as in there's no negative events or repercussions of that card. So, well, we just got the best part in the beginning. I guess just nine more to go, right? Okay, so first thing we notice, this is going to be an auction card. We have that little ship icon there, and that means we're going to have this imported hammer, which looks pretty interesting, but we'll get to that in a second. Oh boy, here we go. First thing off the bat, every rank six elder dies in a storm. So storms have claimed our best sailors, our greatest minds of the sailing generation of the previous one are gone. So if you have a rank six elder, which everybody does, they lose a cube. Goodbye. Oh, captain, my captain. Anyway, the next icon is a feud decimation icon, but this can be prevented if, if uh, each individual tribe has a version of a, uh, of a type one elder, right? I know it's called rank one. I'm calling it type one. Um, this, in this case, is a, it prevents that. See, the little symbol says, hey, if you got that guy, it prevents that. So everybody has their rank one person or type one. Rank one just sounds just weird to me. Anyway, so they don't have to undergo that. If they didn't, then what would happen is you would lose half of your unassigned hunters uh, rounding up, I believe, and also one elder. So, you know, it's nice to have the chief, right? It's good to, it's good to have those chiefs. The next icon is where we're going to start having some serious decision-making in crimps, because that one says, basically, for every elder we have, we have to... That's the elder icon, right? This little, like, uh, not full circle guy elder. For every one of those, we have to either give up an energy or kill an elder. So you're going to see those throughout the game. This one's going to happen fairly periodically in the event card pile, and it's going to be one of the major constraints on our ability to uh, store energy, but also have it for other things we need. And, and if you remember the tableau, there's not a lot of cards that give energy right now on the tableau. There's the ring seal. Um, wow, I think that's about it. And the new world. But remember, we just lost our mariners, so there's no transportation to or from the New World, and for the um, tool and the tunit, they cannot, uh, unless they have a sled, they can't go to any southern biome, because you need a mariner of rank 4 to do that, or a rank 6 mariner, right? Type 6. But uh, perhaps the green can, uh, perhaps the tunit can still use their colonists here on Mark 1 to get energy. That's their one inherent advantage. They may be less affected by that. They also have a few other special abilities regarding that depletion elder energy event we have to deal with. Um, one, of, of course, is that they have the natural ability to promote unassigned hunters for free to elders, and so they don't have to pay an energy cost. Normally, if you want to promote somebody from your unassigned hunter pool, right here, to an elder, you pay one energy for each. And as you can see, we're already going to have to pay a lot of energy now. Energy is sort of, um, it's a tight resource. You know, it's, uh, ivory and iron are good, and they're difficult to get a hold of sometimes, for sure. But energy is something that you really have to be always mindful of and always thinking, oh, i got to store that up, because you do have to pay for this. Uh, many things do demand an energy cost um, through the event deck, right? Okay. Green has the advantage. They have a colony of Markland, which gives them the ability to fairly cheaply access energy. Um, and they have the ability to promote for free. And Celia gives the ability to, whenever that icon comes up, you pay one less. So even though it says one for every one, if since... Green has this daughter and no one has married her, only Green gets to share in this ability to tune it. So that's kind of nice for them. So we'll start with them. They have five elders. We do have uh, seven energy. That's pretty good. That's a nice little um, surplus there, but I wouldn't like to give up too much here. And so what I'm thinking is we're going to give up the tracker. Tracker is going to be really important later on as the game gets colder because um, they allow you to hunt one cold side bi biome as if it were warm, which is very, very big, right? And you can get multiple trackers, but we're going to let that guy die off. He's gone. That means we would have to come up with three energy. Well, we already had to, what do we have to do? We had to come up with four. So we have to come up with three more or kill three elders. And I think... Uh, the Shaman, the Artisan. we got to keep the Artisan because we want to be able to hold cards in our hand. This is sort of the thing. We need to start securing the literacy for some of our people. And the Shaman's pretty good because we might be able to domesticate some of this turn. you got to keep the Chief, and I might need to raid. So we're going to have to pay three energy, I think, which is not great, but I think it's fairly doable for the Tunit because they have access to more energy. So back to the old piles. Here we go. Um, yellow. Yellow's going to be kind of hurting. Yellow, see, they don't have these special abilities, and even though yellow has, sorry, that's their pile, they also have seven energy. 
Uh, I think they also are going to elect to lose their tracker. I think everybody's pretty much going to elect to lose their tracker right now, which is not great, but there is no cold biomes right now, so that's actually okay. And they might also want to raid or do other things. Is it really worth it for them, though, to lose four energy? It's difficult. See, Yellow doesn't have access to the uh, cheap, abundant energy in Markland, right? And they won't be able to raid anywhere in the south, and not that there is, so they're going to have to go for that. The one advantage Yellow does have is that they are going to be able to go first, and they are going to go first because of their limited ability to transport to other biomes. They're going to have to really stay into the northern. They can't go to Markland either, so they're going to have to focus on the north here, which means they pretty much only have access to the ring seal for energy. Hmm. Hmm. They could possibly lose their Sage because they have access to uh, Papili here who gives them plus one, right? So that's nice. So I think they will do that. They can actually um, afford to lose a Sage. It's not great because that means they can't make tools right now, but the only tool on the board is this one, and it does let you... It does incredibly help, help in, like, fishing rolls, but there's not that many fishing targets on the board. Um, the Seal is already... Our Alpha is going to guarantee that one automatically. Um... There is the shark that's in the southern biome, and we can't travel there right now without promoting some elders, so we'll kill off that guy too. That means we now just pay three. That's not bad. That's not terrible. But if it comes up again, you can see how this becomes a problem. Like, and if you get two or three of these in a row, it can be a big problem. Red's in the same issue, right? Same boat, but they even have less energy to spend, so they're going to have to probably have to be even more... Uh, I don't know, cost cutting, I don't know what we're going to have to do. They don't have, they do actually kind of have excess energy. Actually, they don't. They don't, so they're going to have to really be careful here. Have to really be careful with the red here. They may have to go really, um, may have to really come to the bone. I think what they're going to do is they're going to take off their war chief, the tracker. <sighs> yeah, and we'll lose those guys, the war chief and the tracker. I think we'll pay what, uh, Three energy, it's so much, and they don't have any energy, and they don't have a mariner, so they can't go to Vinland. And they have to promote one. Oh, this could be bad for them. They're gonna lose the blacksmith too, so they're only gonna lose two. Wow, see, the Norse just got totally decimated there with their elders and their experience and their sweet bonuses. So two energy now for the two remaining guys. Okay, so now we look at this card and we auction it off. It's an imported hammer. So in phases three and four, it allows metallurgical rolls or rolls that you conduct on metallurgical biomes. Uh, threes become a one, and on raids, you get to reroll sixes, which is pretty interesting. That's a multi-use card. Phases three and four, to remind you, include negotiation and attacks and the roll for the hunt. So that's actually pretty interesting because uh, anytime you do an attack, it automatically becomes a raid biome. So that means you get to reroll sixes on attacks, but on metallurgical hunts, such as um, ba -ba -bum, the new world threes become ones which means automatically if you see here threes kill you there threes kill you there but if you have the imported hammer suddenly a lot less dangerous so this is actually a very useful item for anybody who has aspirations in the new world which is everybody now that the energy deficit is on the energy crisis unfortunately the Norse have almost nothing to bid with because they had no access to ivory and both the tool and the tunit because of their trophy hunting, which may actually hurt them in the long run, but they do have access to ivory, and they both have three ivory. Now, the one thing you got to remember, though, is that Papili wins all auction ties. See, if you were playing this three-player, this is kind of one element. When you play solo, it's more difficult to simulate or fudge because there's no clear advantage. Papili could win if she goes all in, but then... Of course, they could just sort of fake her out, right? The, the uh, Tunit player could just throw in maybe one just to make sure that they beat out Sigrid or maybe two. Um, if I were playing this, this this is a pretty pretty good item, but the yellow can't utilize ugh, that much, but it would be very useful in the future. And so I think what they're going to do is they would, they would probably optimally bid like two. I don't think it would go in because it's not the most useful thing, and having one would allow them to win ties if other people had two in. So they would put in two, ideally. And I think green would also have put in two secretly because that way they could have beaten the one bid from them 
and at least with two they tied up their bids again although they could also just gone all in and for them it, it is it is more useful you know to not have the uh, threes there right um, so maybe they would go all in although ivory although still there is some ivory left here the polar bear is available so there is another option of ivory hmm that's difficult to say maybe they would go all in for this yeah, that could actually kind of be helpful. I think we would go all in, because I think they have designs to do raids. So this is a case where they easily could have, Papali could have tied for this, but it's less useful for them overall because they don't have colonists in Markland, and there are few other metallurgical biomes. In fact, I think that's only the inventions have them, right? And not even those do. That's a fishing one. Oh, yeah, that one's there, the cold forging process. But again, that's so easy to get. Why would you even want to worry about rerolling that? So yeah, that's I think is what would happen. Ultimately, Green would probably just say, hey, we're going to go all in. That's kind of early bid, but they took out the two to three. So we'll say that happens. And they grab the imported hammer here. Um, if at any point they need to discard it, and there are events that do force you to get rid of cards like this, uh, they would get one iron token. So there's always something like that. They did trade basically three ivory for one iron, which is not a great, necessarily a great trade-off. Um, but this ability can be really helpful, especially since they still have people in the new world. Okay. So we did the auction phase, and now we'll do hunter assignment. They turn order on this card, since I just put it over here, we gotta remember. Yellow goes first, and they will opt to go first. They Now, they still have a war chief, so they could designate who goes first, but because of the scarcity of resources and the limited ability to move on the board, it's gonna be really important they secure that uh, ring seal, because they don't have access to any energy. But they also have a lot of guys, and it's not just worth it to send a bunch of guys up for a really easy target. So they may want to spread a little out and get some other things. Might be worth it to go for something they could domesticate, perhaps, that muskox. Although, again, costing two energy per turn, that's, that's almost too much. It's almost too much. But Polar Bear does kill pretty heavily, and their bonuses lie in maritime hunting. They're in fishing. Nobody has the land hunting bonus yet, or any technology that helps with land hunting. Hmm. So the polar bear could be a dangerous ride, but something that might help out with ivory, which we could always use as the yellow player, because we like to win ties. And we would deny our ability of green to replenish as well, which is something they may try to do. Hmm. I feel like a battle is imminent. There's just so few things to choose from. That could be good. That's a pretty safe, easy target, but you just get two. This is more dangerous. Maybe I do that and just make the more dangerous roll for them. Force them to kind of take the more aggressive hunt. So that's what I think we're going to do. They have a bunch of cubes. We need to also think about reassigning guys. We want to promote any elders. We don't necessarily need a sage. We do need a mariner, though. That is pretty wild. We're going to need that one. Pretty. And if we did put one in, I suppose we get to use it right away. Hmm. 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 This is how, yeah, that's how that works. It would cost you one energy. Oh yeah, in phase two. See, that's what it is. See, you see this? I forgot. There's that icon. See, it's weird, but it's up there. <laughs> phase two means we can assign a hunter here if we pay an energy. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take one guy here, and he's going to become our new mariner. And we're going to pay one for that. That's very scarce energy, but we're doing it because we actually, I feel like that's going to be really key for us to be able to move guys around. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to send... Ugh, two guys over to Markland, maybe? Okay, but now I have access to a mayor. I could go south, but there's no energy in the south. But there is a colony in the south. Not sort of worth it, I think, for me to do that right now. It would help me get rid of some of my hunter count here, which is already getting kind of high. And it would allow me to sort of maybe preempt the Norse from grabbing it too. Yeah, I think that's sort of worth it. Yeah, there's really nothing else in the south I need that I can't get in the north, which essentially is getting more babies. That's a nice target. That would be kind of dope. That would actually be really good, actually. I think the more I think about that elk hound, I really should have gone for it the first round. That could be really good. But I need energy. I need energy, energy, energy. So I think I'm going to do three of my cubes are going to go there. To the Vinland Colony. All right. That leaves me, what, with three, four, five in the alpha... 
I don't necessarily want to hunt a bunch of things. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go take... Yeah, I think we're going to do is we're going to take four guys here, including the Alpha, right? We're going to go to the Musk Ox. Try to get that Musk Ox secured there. And then I think we're going to also... Should I just try to put guys in the seal ring seal pup? That means green's probably going to come after me because they're going to have to do something. They can't just spend all their time on the polar bear. And the muskox has four guys. They may they may throw down. May, that may be a throw down there. I don't know. Yeah, that's what we'll do. I think we're going to get a little greedy here. We're going to try to see and push there. We're going to push it. We're going to say, hey, look, we're spreading our forces then a little bit. But um, we're trying to give ourselves the best ability to respond and deal with an aggressive green player, right? Because we know they're going to have to get aggressive here. Okay. Green is indeed next. Green can promote for free, and green's going to do that, I think, because green also wants their mariner, and they get to do it for free. That is their special ability. Oh, I should have thought about raiding, because they did have the war chief, but I didn't. Oh, why didn't I do that? I should have done that instead. Oh, I know why, because here's the thing. I could go declare a raid on these guys, but then he could send his guys to defend these his daughters. Um, that's kind of the one downside of going first, right? If you go first, you pretty much have to declare your intent, and you don't really, and your opponents get to respond. Um... There's some value in taking the initiative. There also is much more value in response, right? So what is green going to do? Green should do something. <laughs> we did promote a guy for free. Hmm. What do we need? We also need energy. We also need maybe to get literate, which would be something I think we need to think about doing. I don't want to tempt the Norse. Norse have so many guys right now. Yellow has assigned everybody everywhere else. So I think it's an ideal time for us to say, okay, Yellow, you want to play that game? Then we're going to go do a Sabine raid. I'm going to take my guys, and we're going to try to grab Papili. I think we're going to try and negate their ability. This is going to this is going to be a, hopefully a good grab. Oof. Yes, this is what we're going to do. We're going to take these three guys, and we're going to try to go to Papili, and we're going to try to get... Her secured. That's a lot of forces for her, but during a Sabine raid, you have to roll um, a one or a three, and a three kills you. So you have to get at least a success. Um, the rest of these guys actually are actually going to come up here, and they are not going to go challenge for the musk ox, although that's probably an interesting roll. I think instead they're going to try to maybe eliminate some yellow, and they're going to go for the ring seal here. So there's going to be some combat. There could be a negotiation, but I don't think the yellow is going to want to negotiate because there's really no there's no position of strength for yellow to negotiate. I mean, he could offer to marry off some of his daughters here. Uh, energy action of elders is pretty nice, but not the greatest. That's okay too. This is pretty much the big one they got to secure because they're green, so they're going to take advantage of that now. And they are going to rumble, I think, on the ring seal. I think that's definitely going to happen. Okay. Red, red also has an issue. They lost a bunch of their elders. They do have a bunch of unassigned um, um, hunters that could become elders. They also don't have a lot of energy, and they have no ability to get to the new world unless they build a mariner themselves, and they have to do that. I think that's going to have to be a survival thing. And they've definitely been limited in their ability because there's Vinland already being inhabited by the those treacherous duel. Anyway, all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to spend precious, precious energy. And we're going to take a guy and make him into a mariner. We need that pretty bad right now. Um, and with that, we're going to move three guys onto Vinland. So if we get a success, we're going to have Vinland become warlike, which I'll have to read the rules about um, colonies that become warlike if you have to instantly battle or what happens. I know that basically you have to, it's harder to get over to resolve victories because there's more, just more uh, failure dice, right? You lose more guys. Um, so it's, it's the same level to get victory, right? You still have to get like what? Doubles? or no, two successes, but um, there's just more chances to die off. <laughs> and you can't spend an ivory to send it back to the peaceful side, which we do have as the Norse, so we could do that. Everybody does have ivory except for the green, the tunit. That's something they could think about, but they need the energy here. And both yellow and red can hunt this because of the chevron thing, right? So it's not going to be a problem. So both have access there. So he's going to do that. Take three to do that. That leaves us with still what? Five, six? And, only, and uh, since we used the Mariner to go here, we can't go anywhere else in the north because we only have one uh, Mariner Elder. If we had multiple Mariner Elders, we could send them multiple places. So let's go get the sled. <laughs> we went for the Caribou, and that's pretty nice, but I think um, since we already get 
one extra guy from our settlement goat. And uh, that's pretty much what that guy would do. I think I was I was being silly and not going for the Norwegian elk hounds. So that's what we're going to do. I don't need to grow a bunch of people. I already have a bunch of people. So I'm pretty satisfied with not doing that. Although cold forge technology would be really good too. That turns fours into ones. And that would be really helpful for um, the new world as well. Okay, here's what we're going to do. The benefit of going last. We're going to send our alpha out here. Although he has, oh, I forgot. Alphas have to roll their dice on metallurgical and raid biomes. They don't get to do the auto success. That's why that doesn't do that. Oh, that's tricky. Tricky, tricky, tricky. <sighs> that's rough. Should I just send like, no, to get doubles, I'd have to do that and then hope for one success there. No, we're gonna, we're gonna try to do this. I think this is key for us. If we can get this domesticated, then we don't have to worry about a mariner loss as much. Um, that's not as debilitating as it can be, right? So I think we will try to do that and get doubles. Um, yeah, okay. That seems to be the plan. Well, let's resolve turn order. So yellow gets to go first. Um, yellow will rumble there. They will rumble in the ring seal, which is not great for them, I believe. Let's double check the rules here for hunting because I sort of... Uh, I'm a little rusty on that. Negotiate attacks. And we're not so both players are not going to negotiate. Literally, yellow has nothing to offer green right now, and green is in a position of superior strength. Okay. Okay. So most iron goes first. Both players both have one. So. Then I know if you don't that, then you basically get to uh, go by turn order. There is no war party, because actually, they're gonna get a roll one or two green is because they brought their guy. And the hunter's thing doesn't matter for eventual stuff, okay. Let's take a look at the new world terrain hostel real quick, just because we're right here. I'm sorry to take time on this, but I wanna look at this rule too. It goes hostile again. Oh, I didn't know about the iron rule. It just has higher attrition. Okay, you don't have to attack. It just has higher attrition. That's interesting. That's actually really interesting. Wait, but you don't have to attack on the new world, right? Hmm, I wonder if like in the new world you have to attack in the new world. Maybe that is true. If that's true, that's gonna be interesting that red and yellow are gonna rumble during this phase. You exchange discs, hand cards, or DNI cards in your tableau. Wow, so I think that does mean that basically if it's on the colony, I thought the colony was immune. I think the colony just allows other people to do that. But essentially, we're going to have to hunt the same hunters on the same card by rolling dice. Yeah. There's nothing I see here that says the colony is immune to that, I don't think. So, yeah, we're going to have to roll for attacks here on the colony, I believe, as well. So we'll start with yellow. They are going to go... Uh, let's start with the, the Vinland colony. All right. So there's three people there. They're like, take that red... And they roll two, two, and a five. Nobody scores hits. Red and retribution comes back. Nobody dies. Okay, so that resolved that. Uh, then I guess they get to hunt this. We'll just go ahead and hunt this. So we roll three dice with threes and sixes, killing us. Yay, two successes and a six. And that's exactly what we needed, was two successes. So we lose a guy. Okay. But we win, what, two colonists back? So we're going to, this goes boom. And because of the uh, more than six, we're going to flip it. Okay. So it's going to be higher attrition here, but we have more than six. Um, what do we get, though? We also got the, um, what was it, two energy and two iron. Yeah, that's what the bonuses we got on that. So that's pretty good for us. Um... 
Mainly because now we denied the Norse the ability. No, the Norse can still hunt there. I forgot. They, they can still do that. I forgot. We just have to have battles, I guess. Rumbles. We got to throw down every now and then. But now we got more iron, so if they fail their roll, they're gonna they're gonna always be on the losing end of attacks if we have more iron. And you can always sacrifice iron to negate losses, right? The uh, the iron rule or the iron price is we're gonna steal from Game of Thrones. Sorry, sorry, George R. R. Martin. Um, please write the next book. P.S. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So what do we do? We did yellow. So yellow did Vinland. All right. I guess yellow's gonna come up here and do their attack up here against the Ring Seal. This now suicidal attack. It looks like. So yellow has their two dice, they're going to roll, and actually yellow gets to go first because now they do have more iron, I suppose, than green did, so they get to go first. No hits. Green gets to respond with four dice, and they become a war party, so this could be very bad. No, nope, just one die. So they kill a guy. Yellow bites it. One well, yellow bites it. Okay. Now we do the hunt. The yellow gets to hunt that with one die. And they fail. And they come over here, and we'll have the old... Oh, and then they go away, because they didn't succeed. But they come back down here in this spot. And then we go to the muskox, and they have four rolls here. One auto success, so really just three rolls. And we're looking for a one or two. And we just get it, so that's nice. No doubles or triples or anything, that's okay. We do it a success, and that's kind of helpful, because we did take some losses. So we come back here. Grab two guys for us. Okay, that was Yellow's turn. Those stay on there because they're colonists. They don't come back, which is kind of nice because we, we're getting a surplus of guys and decimation can really happen when you start building up too many guys. Okay, turn order was green. Uh, green only has two things. The ring seal, which was not successfully hunted. Now they pretty much will successfully hunt it and they roll three. Doesn't really matter, I guess, since we don't think there's any way to take that. Yeah, so they get a um, baby and an energy. So way to go, green. And an energy token comes up here. So yeah, they got another guy. Nice energy token. These guys retreat back to their festive homeland. And uh, they will try to also uh, engage in Markland here. So we're going to roll, what, four dice? And they got two successes. And they rolled, what, threes and sixes kill you? No deaths. So they get, a, and they only need one success. They get a colonist and four energy. So here comes a colonist. That means we're going to need to start moving some of these guys off. We're kind of crowding it. And uh, we get four energy, but we already have five. So the max is eight. So we get three more here. Okay, pretty, pretty good. They also have a Sabine Raid going on here. So there's no Defenders, a Sabine Raid, I believe. Yeah, so it says we have a one or two there, but I think that's only possible if, if we have um, the Alpha, as I recall. So why don't we go ahead, since I already spent time looking at the rules. I hate doing this, I'm sorry. I tried to remember them, but sometimes you just don't, can't get them all down. Roll for the hunt. Save minor livestock raids. Here we go. Oh yeah, I could have raided livestock too. Each raiding hunter placed makes a hunt roll just for a biome to succeed. At least one hunter must have survived attrition. As indicated by the icon, successful hunt of a daughter required if one of your surviving raiders, blah blah blah. Okay. I guess so. Okay. Oh, that's right. I was thinking this gave us the ability to roll ones or twos. That is only with a um, alpha, but then when you do Sabine raids, it's a whole different type. It becomes that Sabine biome, I think, temporarily, or Sabine thing. Anyway, we're going to roll three dice. We need ones or threes, and threes kill us. Nothing. So we didn't even raid it. Oh, that's too bad. That would have been really helpful. Um, so they go home without having acquired or stolen a daughter. Okay. That is the end of Green's turn. Now we're dealing with Red. Um, Red's going to try to roll here now on a much more difficult roll, but they need this to happen. They need two successes and twos, threes, and sixes kill them. They got their successes, and they die only once. 
So that's nice. He basically lose a guy, but then he'll immediately come back and add one more. So colonists are now kind of really gathering here in Vinland, and they score two energy and two iron. Yes, that's, that's, that helps. Now they have five. Very helpful. Okay, and of course, we're going to try to go for this dog here. So we have, we're going to actually roll the alpha as a die. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six die to roll on this. We're trying to get what we need for, you know, uh, what we need doubles to pick it up. So we need that. Six die. We got the doubles. We got the success. Two sixes and a one. So not only do we get a baby, but we also can take this into our hand. Red gets a nice cube. All these dudes come back. And since we got the doubles, we take this into our hand. And the way I'm going to signify this, since we have limited space, I mean, I can spread out, but I just, you know, we're going to keep it nice and tidy, is I'm just going to go ahead and put that guy like this right here, just to show that he's not really in play, but he's in our hand. Um, we do can we can do that one. We don't have a blacksmith, right? But we do have... Um, Brigitta, who gives us plus two hand size at all times. In order to play this later on, we're going to have to pay an energy because we do have a shaman. We can pay an energy to domesticate a card, which is going to be very helpful for us, I believe. And we do actually have a little extra energy, so that's actually going to be very helpful to do. The red actually, boom, scored. And also because we took that into our hand and not necessarily put into play in the tableau as was the case with the narwhal and the walrus, we're actually going to replace this card in the biome. Ooh, bog iron. So for two successes, you can get an iron, but you have to also expend an energy or deplete an elder. So remember again, oh, that's only in phase one. I was going to say, wait, remember she loses one, but that's only in phase one. That's only in that very first events phase. So here you'd have to cough up an energy or an elder to get an iron resource. But it's there pretty much forever. It won't go away. Okay, so red did their attack there. Red resolved that. So now we go to the domestic animals phase. We Remember, we, nobody has anything you have to pay for to feed, um, so we just get one baby here again because we have the nice little settlement goat. He comes there. Now we go to phase six, elder actions, and the only one who can take an action is the Norse, and they're going to spend a energy token, and they actually are going to domesticate this Norwegian elk hound. And so what does that allow us to do? Well, if we have to get rid of him, it's going to give us a, an energy token because we basically slaughtered them to eat them. And what it does, though, is it allows us in phase four, the hunt rolls, uh, to re-roll on land hunting any threes, and it gives us the sled ability. So huge, because there actually are a fair amount of land hunting things here. Like, like all four of those are land hunting. And because we have the sled, we can travel as many guys as we want to those. Sled, you know, Mariners let you move four at a time but the sled lets you move an infinite number of guys if you want because you basically have the ability to transverse Greenland fairly easily, whereas before it would be too harsh to move on foot, and that's why you would use your Mariner. Okay, so that is the end of turn two. A little more tumultuous, as you see, so we'll have to wonder what happens with turn three. Green did not secure um, literacy of any kind or the ability to have the kind of things. So they're going to have to really depend on their artisan, but again, it's fairly easy for them to cycle unassigned hunters into this uh, fairly easily because they don't pay energy costs. And yeah, everybody sort of secured a little more, got a little better, but again, some conflict happened. We got some n nice iron on the board, and uh, still the north is hurting. We haven't had any cooling yet. I think that will change some things or migration, so I'm going to have to keep an eye on that. Anyway, that's the end of turn two, and when we come back, turn three of Greenland.